Well, welcome into the Cook Center Bell Family Arena in Rocky Lamar Court, where we're set for the first round of Heart of America champion versus American Midwest champion here in the national tournament. The Pioneers, the host team, the third seeded team in the Kramer bracket, playing host to the Central Baptist College Mustangs from Arkansas, who rolled through the American Midwest Conference, as did the Pioneers in the Heart of America, to be fair. But with the new NAI National Tournament format hosting a true home game in the opening round of the National Tournament. It's a Pioneers traditional starting five. Caleb Jones McCreary set to jump center against Jonas Carlisle. And after a, an errant pass from official Pat Bay, we'll try it one more time, and Jones McCreary wins the tip. So your host, the Pioneers, with the first possession of the ball game. It's Sage Borden hounding. Van Dyke out top, but he got it to Ed Wright. Little ball screen comes from Jones McCurry. Ed snakes off that screen, pull up jumper, too strong, tipped up and rattled around. Eventually, the defensive rebound comes into Devin Foster's hands, and here comes Sage Bourbon, the 5'9 junior from Bronx, New York, manning the point guard duties for Central. He's the leading scorer for this team, although the guy with the ball in his hands now, Deshaun Corbrew. Right there at 14 a game with him in a transfer from Texas Tech. There's some Division I transfers up and down this roster for Central Baptist. The Pioneers able to start with a stop. Van Dyke high post to Jones McCrary. Zoom action for Anthony Brown, the Heart of America Conference Player of the Year. They go right inside to Jones McCrary. He's got a little height advantage on Corpru. And he goes up and over with a jump hook. Missed it, got his own rebound. And second chance, he's fouled from behind. Caleb will go to the line for two. He was fouled by Deshaun Corpru, first one of the game. Mentioned it once already, Deshaun, a 6'5 senior from Norfolk, Virginia, but a transfer from Texas Tech. Second leading scorer on this Mustang club. Picks up an early foul. Jones McCurry misses the first of two. First time in program history the Pioneers have hosted a national tournament game, of course, Nobody hosted games for the vast majority of the NAI National Tournaments. It's only been the last couple of years where there have been regional host sites. Jones McCurry knocks down the first and gets the scoring started. It's an early 1-0 lead for the home team, your Pioneers. Bourbon probing. Good defense from the Pioneers. Able to ice the ball screen in the slot. Corpru on Anthony Brown. Traveled. Nope. Stepped out of bounds on the sideline. There's a turnover. Anthony First team all-conference, conference player of the year, and conference defensive player of the year. Going to be tasked with guarding Corpru tonight, it looks, as Van Dyke turns it over in the backcourt, pressured by Bourbon. Not really a full-court press, just picked up man-to-man -man and forces the turnover. Bourbon, a little horns ball screen action. Rolling into the paint goes big Thomas Makaisa. Tomas Makaisa, a 6'8 senior from the Czech Republic. That ball goes into the backcourt. Anthony Brown going to pick it up. Live ball. He goes right at Corpru. Some contact trying to get up and pick a second foul. He didn't. Stayed vertical. Pioneers don't capitalize on the fast break opportunity. It's a smart play by Anthony trying to, again, draw two fouls early on Corpru, but came up empty. Bourbon now to Jonas Carlisle to Foster. Right, forces him to the baseline, ice the ball screen again. Carlisle matched up with the freshman from Barcelona, Gerard Bosch. Foster takes a three from behind the ball screen up top, missed it. There's Bosch pulling in the defensive rebound. In traffic, finally got it to Van Dyke. Slow start to the game for both groups. They both want to play fast. This is a high scoring, I expect a high scoring affair, although national tournament time, you never know. Every possession little more tight on the defensive end as Bosch got all the way into the paint but the right-handed jump hook rattles out now Bourbon got a mismatch or a cross match I should say Gerard Bosch guarding the point guard now he's more than capable of 
staying in front of guards on the perimeter. Bourbon probing into the paint. Goes at Bosch. Bosch stayed vertical, forces the miss. Here come the Pioneers. Two on one break. Anthony Brown to Van Dyke, who just didn't catch it cleanly. Couple ball handling errors now from the fresh or the sophomore point guard. Ed Wright, pull up three, rattles around. Looked good, didn't drop. Just a one nothing score three minutes in. Corp Brew looking to go inside, had his pass deflected. Jones McCreary stole it, and he threw it back to Corp Brew. Just trading turnovers here early on. Corp Brew the pull up three in transition, and he knocked it down. Deshaun Corp Brew, the first field goal of the game, is a pull up three from the logo in transition. Caleb directing traffic out top. Got it to Ed Wright on the wing. Now they're going to post Anthony Brown. Brown one-on-one -on -one with Carlisle. No help comes. Ant puts it on the floor, spins baseline. And how did that not go down? Ball just rolled around every part of the rim and s spilled out. Carlisle for the Mustangs in transition. Lost it. Anthony Brown poked it free from behind, and then Foster stole it away from Ed Wright from behind. Several opportunities on what would be transition for the Pioneers come up empty so far. The number one offense in the heart of America with no field goals here in the first four minutes. Comes Van Dyke on the help, poked it free, but Central Baptist able to recover. Bourbon, three from out top, contested from Van Dyke, trying to draw a foul, none was called. Good ball pressure from Foster. You got to give credit to the Central Baptist defense here. Again, poked free from behind. Corpru got a hand on it. Here comes number 23, Wade Williams, into the ball game for Central. He's only played 13 games, but he's shooting 55% from three. Absolute sniper from the three-point line. 23 in the blue. Caleb dribble handoff action with Ed Wright, and Ed had his pass deflected not once but twice. Corpru got his hand on it both times, eventually stolen away by the Mustangs. He was looking for Jones McCrary rolling to the rim, just couldn't get it to him. And that three banked in from the top of the key by Carlisle. Jonas Carlisle missed that shot by about four feet long and still got it to go in off the glass. Van Dyke fouled by Bourbon. The ball pressure from Sage Bourbon causing some issues for Branton Van Dyke early on. That time he was bailed out with a foul. Too much body contact. Sometimes those little guys, it's just standing five foot nine, and get up underneath you, take away your airspace. There's a turnover from Van Dyke, trying to throw it off the back of Bourbon. And he's going to take a seat now. Van Dyke exits in fifth year senior. Jake Alexander in for the first time for your Pioneers. From McPherson, Kansas. Been really a four-year starter. Now it's a veteran group in for the Pioneers, except for the freshman, Bosch. Two fifth-year seniors, a true senior and a junior, Ed Wright. Foster to the rim. Got it to go with the left hand. It's an 8-1 lead for Central Baptist. It's a team that comes in 25-6 on the season. Your Pioneers 25-5. Highly ranked, Central Baptist playing in the American Midwest, maybe not as highly ranked of a conference, but all kinds of talent on this CBC team. As Jones McCrary gets the first field goal to go through traffic, the right-handed jump hook banks in. Bourbon now outside to Foster. Kind of a five-out look from CBC. Corpru pull up three from behind the ball screen and nothing but the bottom of the net, Deshaun Corpru. Two triples now early on. He's got six. Mustangs lead at 11-3. Anthony Brown off the ball screen. Thought about a three of his own, turned it down. Ball finally found its way inside to Jones McCreary. It's been a helter-skelter possession, and that's going to be a foul on Carlisle. And we'll head to the... Media timeout in the national tournament every under five minute break. Media timeout, so 
Central Baptist College with a hot start, 11-3 lead over your host, the Pioneers. 13.45 to go in the first half. Coming out of the media timeout, down by eight early on. Pioneers inbound it to Jones McCurry up top. Fake the handoff to Ed Wright, post Anthony Brown, and that's another turnover. Jones McCurry trying to lead him to the rim on the post feed, just too far out in front of Anthony Brown. Double drag ball screen for Central Baptist. Borbon able to get off and then staggered double for the shooter out of the corner but Jake Alexander there to block the shot and he's ahead of everybody Alexander's layup goes down a circus finish from Jake Alexander he blocked Wade Williams three who's a 55 percent three-point shooter ran the floor caught a full court outlet from Anthony Brown and somehow got that to go down first bucket of the game for Alexander hopefully settle the pioneers down a bit Another deep three from Corpru. He's three for three from downtown. Cannot ask for a better start from a first-team all-conference player, Division I transfer in Deshaun Corpru. Bosch battling for the offensive rebound. Got it, but couldn't get the finish. Skip pass. Anthony Brown from the corner. No good. Carlisle the rebound. That's a great look for a great shooter. Just came up empty. And Pioneers cannot let number three in the blue jerseys get another clean look off. Carlisle probes, kicks to Foster. Foster will shoot it, but wants to put it on the deck. Gets a ball screen now. Pioneers eventually switch it. Carlisle takes a deep three, left it way short. Right now, it's a win on the defensive end for the Pioneers if anybody other than Deshaun Corpru takes a shot. Anthony Brown rejects the ball screen into the paint, spins. He's fouled, going to go to the line for two. Couldn't get the finish. It took the contact. See if the Pioneers throw on a little press back to zone, which they've shown fairly often this season after made free throws. We try to change the rhythm of this game for the Mustangs. AB's first free throw up and good, so Anthony on the scoreboard. Brooks Langer enters for the first time. A junior sharpshooter from Harrisonville, Missouri. Anthony Brown goes two for two, so it's a football score, 14 to seven early. Central Baptist on top by a touchdown. Here comes the press after the made free throws. We'll see if they fall back to the zone or match up man-to-man. -man. It looks like they're going to stay in that 2-3 look. As Corpru has exited the ball game, that's a break for the Pioneers. I don't know why you take him out. Offensive rebound, last touch by Carlisle. Pioneers come up with a stop in the zone. Anthony Brown running the point guard duties now. Goes to Brooks Langer out top. Gets it back on a handoff from Jones McCurry. Probes, kicks. Langer thought about a three, put it on the deck. Goes to Jones McCurry. Had it poked away from behind, able to recover. Puts it on the floor against Carlisle. 
has a height advantage. And Carlisle banging inside with him, forces the miss, and comes up with the rebound. Bourbon brings it across the timeline. Pioneers stay in the zone after the miss. Got to find 23 on the three-point line now. They force the 15-footer no good. Here's Alexander running once again ahead of everybody and finishes at the reverse. That's twice now in transition. Jake Alexander gets an easy one for the Pioneers. He's got four. Cuts the lead to five. Pioneers stay in the zone. Really the only Mustang that is an absolute cannot let him get a three-pointer off is Wade Williams in the corner, and Langer won't let him catch. Flare screen for Bourbon, late shot clock. He's got to fire one up over the outstretched arms of Anthony Brown. There's another stop. Jones McCrary, the rebound. Zone has changed the tempo of the game now. Could be the zone, or it could be that Corpus on the bench. But Anthony Brown answers with a pull-up jumper. It's a one-possession game. Anthony Brown with four points, and Pioneers stay in the zone. Showing the press first. And all the way to the cup with the scoop finish was Kyle Harding. That's another Division I transfer. Harding transferred from Prairie View A&M. A 6'3 junior from Roosevelt, New York. His first basket puts the Mustangs back up five. On an offense out of the pinch post, as the Pioneers do so often. Anthony Brown got a switch. Now they go inside to Jones McCrary. He rips baseline, reverse. Rolls out. How does that not go down? It's a great move from Jones McCrary. Got by Carlisle on the baseline and just missed the layup. And that's twice in a row now that Kyle Harding has got to the rim and finished with the scoop. Once with the left and once with the right hand. Harding all the way to the cup. It's an 18-11 lead for the visitors, the Central Baptist College Mustangs, the American Midwest champions. Here halfway through the first half in the opening round of the NAI. And Makai Elmore throws it in on the baseline. We haven't seen Makai on the floor in months. The sophomore standout point guard from Dayton, Ohio, checks in and immediately knocks down a pull-up jumper. Makai broke his foot early in the season. And the Pioneers went on a great run without him, but they certainly missed the presence of the all-conference point guard, Makai Elmore. And he is rehabbed to the point where he's back on the floor here in the national tournament and knocks down his first shot. Unbelievable. Congratulations to Makai for getting back out here after breaking his foot earlier in the season. Wow. Did not expect to see number three on the floor for the Pioneers. And they come up with a stop. Well, we'll see if Makai is on a minutes restriction. The last time I saw him a couple weeks ago, he still had a walking boot on. Now he's going to bring it up against the press. It looks to be moving just fine. He gets a high ball screen from Anthony Brown. And Makai got a switch. He's on Wade Williams. He's going to go by him. Into the paint. Floater from Makai. Some contact. No whistle. He got hit on the arm. Officials missed that one. And here come the Mustangs in transition. To the rim. Layup no good. Great defense in transition. Brooks Langer forced the miss on what would have been an easy two. I don't know if Brooks got a piece of that. I may give him a block shot. Bosch out of the high post. 
You swing to Langer in the corner. Now they post Bosch inside on the block. One on one with Corpru. And there's a ton of contact. How is there no whistle there? Corpru blocked the first shot. Bosch got it back, and he's fouled from behind. If that's not on Corpru, it should be. It is. That's his second. It's the second foul he committed on that possession. But it's his second personal of the game. And that's big. Is Corpru an outstanding player? With nine points, three for three from downtown early, but picks up his second foul, and he may head right back to the bench. We'll see if head coach Sam Conkey will leave his senior out there on the floor with two early fouls. Ed Wright checks back in, and here comes the freshman from Olathe Northwest, Isaiah Cole, into the ballgame for the first time for the Pioneers. And Bosch able to hit the second. It's a four-point game, his first point of the ball game. Interesting group on the floor now. No Anthony Brown and no Jones McCrary. And Makai Elmore, I can't get over it. He's back on the floor. Thought he was done for the year. Makai icing the ball screen with Bosch. They got it to Carlisle in the paint. He kicks to Williams, not the guy you want to leave open. He missed it long. Elmore the rebound. He pushes in transition. Gets a screen from Bosch. Hand off to Ed Wright on the left side. Ed kicks it out. The ball went through the legs of Jake Alexander, but he beat everyone to the floor and picked it up. Got it back to Ed Wright. Ed attacking inside, kept the pivot foot down, had a shot blocked by Carlisle. And Central Baptist getting their hands on so many basketballs in the passing lanes and also on shot attempts. Not an overly big team size-wise, but they are active on the defensive end. Not a true big on the floor for CBC right now. Still forcing block shots at the rim. Ed Wright, catch and shoot from the top of the key, knocks down the three ball. His first bucket of the game, and we got a one-point game in the Cook Center. It's a good crowd for the Pioneers here, playing a true home game in the national tournament. Bosch picks up the, the foul hedging the ball screen there as Borbon was going to turn the corner. And you always wonder a little bit about how the crowd's going to be in the postseason because the students have to pay to get in. But the lower bowl of the Cook Center is absolutely full, and we got folks upstairs. Of course, the, the Bethel Pilots from Indiana who won the opening game of this tournament over LSU Alexandria up, up top scouting for their opponents tomorrow night. Nice kick in Harding to Williams, and he's not going to miss two. 50% three-point shooter. He goes one for two, knocks down the triple. Give the assist to Kyle Harding. And here's trigger the offense from the elbow. Backdoor cut from Isaiah Cole. He kicks to Alexander. Three ball from the corner, and he knocks it down. Jake Alexander having himself a first half. He's got seven. I think he's three for three from the floor, and it's a one-point game. Good ball pressure from Cole up top, but Harding able to split. He goes all the way to the rim and missed the dunk. Went with the left hand and got hung on the rim. Pioneers looking to take advantage. It's Ed right to the cup. No whistle. There's so much contact there. How is there no shooting foul? And CBC looking to take advantage in transition, and they missed it. Layup was missed. Give Isaiah Cole credit. He sprinted back in transition defense and forced what, the miss on what would have been an easy two. I don't know if he got a piece of it. a similar play to one Brooks Langer had earlier. Makai got all the way to the rim and missed the layup, but saving it out of bounds. Jake Alexander, right place, right time, and he misses the spinning left-handed shot from the block. And back and forth action with no points the last few possessions, but the pace has ratcheted up. It's a 21-20 lead for the Mustangs. Carlisle one-on-one -on -one with Jake Alexander. Posts, turns, and shoots over the top. Missed it short. And Elmore last touched it. So it'll be Central Baptist basketball. Anthony Brown will head back in along with Brant Van Dyke. Uh, Elmore on the floor for a short stint. You can see he's still got the burst and the athleticism, maybe a bit of rust. has got all the way to the rim, lost it a bit. Not something you see often from Makai. Probably on a bit of a minutes restriction. Van Dyke back in after gathering himself. Couple new faces for Central Baptist as well. Savon Smith in for the first time, a freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas. So 
comes Harding, gets a screen from Carlisle. Pioneers ice, kicks to the corner, and the freshman attacks hard. He's going to go to the line. So Vaughn Smith, fresh off the bench, right away attacking the rim. Personal fouls on Anthony Brown, his first third team foul. And Smith misses the front end. So Vaughn, just a 41% free throw shooter. Hasn't taken a three all year. So, so shooting not the reason he's out on the floor, and he goes 0 for 2. Van Dyke tracks down the long rebound. Pioneer still clinging to just a one-point game. Right? Fakes the zoom action. They go to Brown in the corner. Empty side ball screen. Anthony drops it off to Jones McCrary, and he had his reverse blocked from behind by Carlisle, but he's fouled. It's a nice two-man game from two first-team all-conference performers, Anthony Brown and Caleb Jones McCrary. Empty corner pick and roll. Dropped it off to the big man, and he'll be at the free throw line when we come back. Under five-minute media timeout. It's a 21-20 lead for the Mustangs here in the opening round of the NAI National Tournament. So Jones McCrary, the senior from Kansas City, the Raytown South High School, KCK Community College transfer, a first-team all-conference performer here in his senior year. At the line with under five to go in the first half and a chance to give the Pioneers their first lead in quite some time if he can go two for two. He missed the front end, so best we can do is tie it at 21. Deshaun Corporu has checked back in for Central Baptist with those two fouls. We'll see if national champion point guard, head coach, and Heart of America Coach of the Year, Adam Hepker, draws something up to go at Corporu, try to get him to pick up a third before the half. We're all knotted up at 21. Stack action goes to Carlisle right side. They split cut, and Devin Foster all alone on the backdoor cut. Good execution from the Mustangs. Back on top by two. Ed Wright refuses the ball screen, gets downhill, missed it, but there's Gerard Bosch for the rebound. He's fouled. Bosch going to go to the line for two more. As the Pioneers not been as efficient offensively as we're used to seeing them, but they are attacking the offensive glass. It's keeping them in it. And that's the third foul on Deshaun Corporal. So that is a huge call. The offensive rebound from Gerard Bosch paying massive dividends as Corpru picks up his third. He scored nine points in about three minutes of game time. He's been on the foul on the bench in foul trouble. That'll send the big man from the Czech Republic, Tomas McKeesing, back in for Central Baptist. McKees a 6'8 senior, transferred from Barry University. And there's Anthony Brown who stole it away from Carlisle, I believe, and lays it over the front of the rim for the easy two, and the Pioneers finally regain the lead, 24-23. It's not very often you're a three seed in the national tournament and face a 
team that's 25 and 6 and has multiple Division I transfers, but that's where the Pioneers find themselves. And there's Bourbon. Ooh, to the rim. Going to go to the line for two. Had his left handed layup, I thought, cleanly blocked by Jones McCreary. Officials disagree. Caleb picks up his first person. Fourth team foul on the Pioneers. The Mustangs have committed seven, so the Pioneers in the bonus for the final 357 of this first half. Bourbon ties the game at 24, his first point of the ball game. So leading scorer for CDC on the year, averaging about 14 and a half a game. And the lefty hits both and puts Central Baptist College back on top, 25-24. And here's a full court press from the Mustangs. Ed Wright takes the inbounds and just says, everybody clear out, I'll bring it across. Long arms and Devin Foster hounding the ball, though. Get it to Anthony Brown, now high post Jones McCurry. Brown attacking in the two-man game. Lobbed it up for Jones McCurry. It was batted away, but Gerard Bosch there to clean it up. And Bosch going to go back to the line for two more. He was fouled by Tomas Makisa, Makisa's first personal. Bosch has been so active on the offensive glass. Earns himself another trip to the free throw line. And Jake Alexander checks back in, gives Brandon Van Dyke a blow. See if the Pioneers go press to zone or if they stay man to man after the made free throw. And they're going to fall back to their man to man defense. All tied at 25. All five Pioneers on the floor in the scoring column, but nobody lighting it up offensively outside of Alexander, who's three for three. The freshman left all alone. Smith misses the three ball, and there's an offensive rebound from Williams, who goes up and over a couple of Pioneers, and Jake Alexander pulls in the defensive rebound. Ed Wright looks to push. He got it to Bosch inside. Bosch kicks to Jones McCurry at 15 feet. Caleb probing out to Ed Wright. Puts it on the deck to the rim. Missed the right-handed layup. Ed has made that shot all year long at a high clip. Has missed it twice tonight. That extended right arm scoop finish. Bourbon misses the layup. Another stop for the Pioneers, and Caleb Jones McCurry throws it full court to right. Ed in transition. Off two feet this time. Hangs and hits. Ed Wright gets the tough finish to go. Puts the Pioneers back in the lead, 27-25. Ed, the leading scorer for this Pioneer ball club, a first-team all-conference performer, in my opinion, should absolutely be an All-American when the postseason awards come out this year. Pioneers did not lose a regular season Heart of America Conference game when Ed Wright was in the lineup. Dropped two when he was out with an ankle injury. Pioneers forced another miss, but that time the freshman, Savon Smith, able to tip it up and in and tie us at 27. And Central Baptist is going to take a timeout. 2.21 to play in the first half here in the opening round of the NAIA National Tournament. Your Mid-American Nazarene Pioneers tied with Central Baptist at 27. some discussion about who's allowed in on the substitution after the timeout. And after it's all said and done, Kyle Harding is going to have to sit at the scores table until the next dead ball. The Mustangs put on the full court press. Langer puts it on the deck. Finally gets to Alexander just beyond midcourt and a dangerous pass to Brown up top. Central Baptist showing zone now. Brown splits the gap, drops it off for Jones McCreary, who was fouled. They missed it. 
Got a shot blocked and then offensive rebound. Kick to Alexander. Jake inside. Back to Caleb. Back to Alexander. Playing a little pitch and catch. Had his shot batted out of bounds. That's a shot clock violation. Pioneers able to get into the teeth of that zone, but just come up empty in the score column. Give CBC credit. The press didn't force a turnover, but it did accomplish something. Pioneers only had about 19 seconds to run zone offense instead of 30. Floppy action. Williams comes off two screens. Alexander there to meet him and ices the ball screen, or tries to anyway. Williams was able to get over the top and was fouled. It's the first personal on Alexander. Fifth team foul on the Pioneers. The 6'5", Anthony Brown guarding the 5'9", Sage Bourbon out top. Ball screen comes, he refuses it, kicks it out on the Spain action. Popping Kyle Harding. Harding puts it on the deck, goes by Jones McCreary. Caleb able to recover, got a piece of it, give him a block shot, forces the miss. Pioneers go two for one here. Minute 15 to play in the game in the first half. CBC in the zone. Anthony Brown splits two defenders, gets the floater to go down. Anthony now with eight first half points, eight of the Pioneers 29, and they lead by two. Pioneers ice the high ball screen for Bourbon. And the story of the first half for Central Baptist was the great start, but the three fouls in the bench time for Deshaun Corporu. It's a wild take from Borbon. This is Anthony Brown pulls down the rebound. Pioneers go two for one again. He splits two defenders to the rim in the highlight dunk. Anthony Brown, oh my goodness. A ridiculous finish. Splits two defenders in the poster on top of a couple of Mustangs. Anthony Brown in double figures with 10 with an exclamation point. A 31-27 lead now for the Pioneers. Timeout, Central Baptist College. Watching the opening round of the NAIA National Tournament. After the highlight dunk from Brown, Central Baptist comes out of the timeout, trailing by four, a four-second difference between shot clock and game clock. They're going to try to wind this thing all the way down. Bourbon handling out top. Anthony Brown guards him. Looks to be a horns flare set, looking to get Williams a three. Pioneers blow it up. Bourbon now late clock, attacks Anthony Brown, poked it free. Bourbon got it back, and Brown comes up with a steal. Five on the clock. He brings it across. Ed Wright in the corner. Three on the way, and it, it goes down. It goes down. Anthony Brown with the steal and the assist. Ed Wright knocks down the triple at the buzzer. It's a 34-27 lead, Pioneers. We'll take a 15-minute halftime break here in the opening round of the NAI National Tournament. The Pioneers will take a seven-point lead into the break over the AMC champ Central Baptist Mustangs.
Well, welcome back into the Cook Center on the campus of Mid-America Nazarene University. We're set for the second half of action in the opening round of the NAIA National Tournament. Part of American Conference champs, your host, the Pioneers, versus the American Midwest Conference champs, the Central Baptist Mustangs in town from Arkansas in a roller coaster of a first half. It was led by Anthony Brown. He leads all scorers with 10 points and a highlight finish to the first half. But the story is the foul trouble for Deshaun Corpru. He had nine points on three triples and he starts the second half with an easy layup curling out of the timeout perfect execution he's got 11 points and I think he's played about three minutes had 3,000 the first half and had to sit the majority so we'll see the job the Pioneers can do on him they've got the conference defensive player of the year Anthony Brown and I'm sure he'll draw the matchup the Corpru now with 11 points and Ed Wright, who ended the first half with a three at the buzzer, picks up right where he left off, his third triple of the ball game. Ed Wright's now got 11 points, and the Pioneers lead back to eight points, 37-29, largest lead of the game. That's a sidestep contested three from Corpru. It's off the mark, but there's Devin Foster to clean it up. Foster's fifth and sixth points of the ball game. Back and forth we go now. It's... A slow start to this game, but both of these teams will score in the 80s and 90s. Expect a high octane second half. Bosch enters the post to Jones McCrary. He's one on one with the big fella from the Czech Republic. Double team comes, kicks to Ed Wright. Another three, this one from way downtown, just off. Bosch the offensive rebound, and he's fouled and gets it to go. Gerard Bosch has been all over the offensive glass here today and converts this one with an and one. That foul's on Tomas Makisa, his second. And you can see right away that Corpru was hesitant to challenge shots inside. He cannot pick up his fourth foul early in the second half. CBC did get the miss, but Gerard Bosch changing the game with his energy. He's got six points. Pioneers lead is nine. The leading scorer for Central Baptist on the season Point guard Sage Borbin held to just two points in the first half. Beautiful pass inside. Oh, Deshaun Corpru is a heck of a player. Just dropped a one-handed dime to Makisa for the layup. Pioneers back to Ed right up top. Ed gets a screen. Gets downhill, lost it. Bosch able to pick it up. Gerard puts it on the floor, spins. Left-handed layup, no good. Jones McCurry battles for the O board, and he's fouled from behind by Makisa. So now he's got three fouls. Two quick ones here in the second half. So CBC, a talented group, but not a lot of depth, especially on the interior. Corpru and Makisa, their two biggest players now with three fouls. Makisa will exit. Wade Williams will check in for him. Williams 6'5", but he is a three-point shooter. That's his job. Caleb one-on-one -on -one with Williams, and Pioneer's going to clear it out, let him go to work. Got to expect a double to come from Borban. It does come late. Williams draws the offensive foul. The Pioneer faithful <laughs> and about 70% of the crowd asking for a flop. You got to give credit to Williams. He's outmatched size-wise, so he's going to take some contact and go down, and he draws the offensive foul. Now, I think he was going to go down no matter what. Pioneers thought so as well, but Caleb picks up the, the charge. It's his first person. Corpru, shot faked, takes a little step back three from the corner, and he knocked down another one. Deshaun Corpru, my goodness. Jones McCrary the other way in transition, had it blocked by Foster. Bosch picked it up, got it to Ed Wright, and there's another charge. Ed Wright this time whistled. Devin Foster draws the offensive foul. Offensive foul number five, Ed Wright. That's his first. I'm telling you what, I haven't seen a better player this season in the Cook Center than Deshaun Corpry. The Texas Tech transfer has 14 points in about five minutes of game time. And now it's Gerard Bosch being tasked with guarding him. He's in the corner as Bourbon probes off a ball screen. Goes to Carlisle up top. And they post Corbrew mid post. The freshman, good defense, forces him to pick up the dribble. They go right back to him at the three-point line. 12 on the shot clock. Corpru dancing with the dribble. Step back three from the wing. And are you kidding me? Deshaun Corpru with 17 points now. I think he's missed one shot. He may have missed two. I can't remember one early on. 
tough shot after tough shot off the dribble, contested from downtown, and it's a one-point game. Ed Wright goes inside to Bosch. Bosch working on Williams, and he goes up and over. The jump hook is good. Bosch takes advantage of the size mismatch. It's a three-point lead, and you cannot let number three get another shot off. As he throws just another dime. Corporu back door with the assist and back to a one-point game. Van Dyke goes by Bourbon, had a shot blocked by Williams from behind. And there's Gerard Bosch again. He is everywhere on the offensive glass. Steals a possession, Ed Wright for three, too strong. Carlisle the rebound, and Central Baptist can retake the lead now. And <laughs> Corper threw what should have been another great pass. Williams wasn't looking for it. It results in a turnover. Wright in transition, hangs and hits, plus the foul. Ed Wright gets the bucket to go in transition, and he's going to go to the line for the in one. Fouled by Carlisle. That's the third personal on Carlisle. So a host of starters now for the Mustangs with three fouls. And I believe they're going to get a lane violation. Nope, it's going to be a loose ball foul on Gerard Bosch, his second. Three-point lead for the Pioneers. Pick and pop up top for Carlisle. He takes the three. The lefties top of the key. Triple just too strong. Had a good look from up top. Likes to pop in the ball screen. Just standing 6'5", but kind of the de facto five-man on the floor now in this five-out lineup for CBC. He's guarding Jones McCrary. And a technical foul called away from the ball on Sage Bourbon. I, I mean, he must have said something, right? It, was absolutely not involved in the play. But officials on the opposite end blow the whistle and call the tech on number zero. I'd love to know what took place on the opposite wing there. It's, again, it was just not, it was completely away from the action. But the technical does count as a personal, so Bourbon picks up his second foul, and Anthony Brown finds himself all alone at the free throw line. And gets the first to go. Live ball technical like that is huge, too, because not only will Anthony get two free throws, Pioneers will keep possession of the ball. He knocks down two. And Kyle Harding will check in for Bourbon. I'm not sure that the Mustangs lose anything with Kyle Harding coming into the game. He had an outstanding first half at the at the rim pretty much whenever he wants. The Prairie View A&M transfer had a big impact on the first half, I'd say. Just four points, but it felt like he was at the rim over and over again. Brown left the floater short. Corpru the rebound, and he throws the full court outlet to Williams. That's an assist and one. Van Dyke's going to get... Hit with the personal foul. That is a fantastic pass from Deshaun Corporu. And Wade Williams, the beneficiary. Williams, a 6'5 sophomore from Huntsville, Texas. Transfer from Ranger College. We talked about how he's a sharpshooter from the three-point line, but he's done more than that. Drawn an offensive foul, running the floor in transition, guarding multiple positions, and he's got six points. The Mustangs trail by two. This is a three versus 14 matchup in the opening round of the national tournament, but it's a 25 and five team versus a 25 and six team. But you don't see that often as Jones McCrary takes contact, goes up and over for the bucket. Coach Hecker begging for the and one. He got hit from behind. Officials passed on it, but Caleb gets the bucket to go. Pick and pop, Williams thought about a three. Bosch ran him off the line. Instead, he takes a contested off-balance pull-up from the elbow and banks it in. 
Wade Williams gets the friendly bounce off the glass. He's got eight. Empty side ball screen. Van Dyke turns the corner to the rim, missed the layup. Jake Alexander there, and he's hit hard by a couple of Mustangs. The fouls on the fouls on Wade Williams. There was some debate as to whether or not it was going to be Williams or Corpru. Corpru with a big smile leaving the floor saying, that's not my fourth. Don't call it on me. The Pioneers with a 48-46 lead at the 14-32 mark of the second half here in the opening round of the NAI National Tournament. Now, coming out of the media timeout will be the starting lineup that began the season for the Pioneers as Makai Elmore is back in again. This is his first action in several months after the broken foot. Makai will inbound on the baseline with Boss Jones, McCrary, Anthony Brown, and Jake Alexander on the floor. Corpru now guarding the 6'8 Jones McCrary. Caleb takes the inbounds to zoom action, gets it to Anthony Brown. Empty side pick and roll. Caleb rolls to the rim. Got it. Had it poked away. Got it back in. Last touched by Harding. He stripped it away from Jones McCurry, but he was standing out of bounds. And will inbound on the baseline once again. Elmore looking for Anthony. Roll into the rim. He curled to the basket for the easy two. Give Mackay the assist. Good execution on the out of bounds play. Anthony Brown with 14 points now. Harding running the point. It's a Spain pick and roll. Corpru popping to the top of the key. Now Anthony Brown gets the matchup, and Corpru takes a three over the top, missed it short. There's the stop the Pioneers needed. Elmore throws it the length of the floor to Anthony Brown. Anthony saved it from going out of bounds, but here come the Mustangs on the live ball turnover. Carlisle inside, easy two. I hate the idea. Elmore was trying to throw it ahead of the pack to Brown, and it there was some contact there. It could have been Corpus' fourth foul. Unlucky. The turnover results in an easy two for the Mustangs. Bosch takes a three from the left wing, left it short. There's Jake Alexander battling for the offensive rebound, and Harding picks up a foul. How many times in the five years have we seen Jake Alexander come up with an insane offensive rebound that he had no business getting? He steals a possession for the Pioneers in just like that, six team fouls on Central Baptist. So Mid-America Nazarene will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Carlisle flops. You've got to be oh, there. He called a block that time. <laughs> that was the third time the Central Baptist has tried to draw a charge in the second half. The first two were whistled as offensive fouls. That one clearly a premeditated flop. And rather than call the flop technical, they just called the blocking foul on Carlisle. But that's the seventh. And Pioneers should be shooting a one and one. And that's also the fourth personal on Carlisle. So Jonas Carlisle takes a seat with four fouls. Savon Smith back in the game, the freshman. That's probably a trade the Pioneers are happy with. Anthony Brown 
have a one and one opportunity. That's no slight to Smith, but a freshman who hasn't done a bulk of scoring that Carlisle has on the season and doesn't shoot it from the perimeter at all. Carlisle a pick and pop threat. AD knocks down the first on the one and one. Lead is back up to three, looking to make it two possessions now. And he does, got them both. Anthony Brown now with 16. And there's the matchup we want to see, 25 in the white versus three in the blue. Two standout, probably, i got to imagine Corporate was the player of the year in the AMC. I don't know that for sure. Williams in the corner, shot fakes, and he draws a foul. Brooks Langer going to be whistled. It's a foul you can live with. Brooks left his feet on the shot fake, but Williams, again, is a guy you've got to drive off the three-point line. Just don't let him get one off. Jones McCurry guarding Savon Smith, the freshman, giving up significant size to Smith, and Caleb will provide a lot of help in the paint here, soaking up cuts and drives. Harding to Williams up top. He gets a screen. Lost his footing, able to keep that pivot foot down, no travel. Harding takes a deep three. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Didn't draw any iron. Great defensive possession for the Pioneers. Come up with a much needed stop. Elmore will handle the full court press. Foster picks up full. Kai calls out a set, gets to Anthony Brown up top. Little split action, skip pass, Langer from the corner. He got it. Three ball, corner pocket, Brooks Langer, his first basket of the ball game, and that's a big one. Pushes the lead out 55-48, Pioneers. Smith attacking that space, does not want to shoot it outside. Jones McCurry knows it, giving him a couple steps. Williams, step back, Langer, good contest, forces the miss. Jake Alexander pulls down the defensive rebound, and Pioneers looking to extend this lead, going on a run finally. Bourbon will check back in at the next dead ball. Kai had it poked away for a moment, now he gets by Foster. All the way to the cup, had his shot blocked by Corpru. Here come the Mustangs in transition. Smith, corner to Harding. Three on the way. He buried it. Kyle Harding has seven points now, and it's a four-point lead for the Pioneers. Clock under 12 minutes to play. The first round of the national tournament. The three-seed Mid-American Nazarene versus the 14-seeded CBC Mustangs. Brown into the paint. Pull-up jumper. Too strong. Savon Smith, the rebound. Harding gets a ball screen into the paint, kicks to Foster. He's going to reset, gets another screen from Smith. Alexander able to fight over the top. Backdoor cut from Williams, and it was poked away from the corner. Should have been a turnover, but right place, right time. Savon Smith comes up with a loose ball and lays it in. Two-point game now. Ed Wright will check back in for the Pioneers' next dead ball, along with Gerard Bosch. Anthony Brown looking to go inside to Jones McCurry, had it poked away. Good help defense from Harding. And Corpru gambled. Anthony Brown gets by everybody and missed the floater. His patented little right-handed floater just off the back rim. And Harding in transition all the way to the rim, fouled by Jones McCurry. And Kyle Harding can tie this game at 55 with a pair of free throws. Borbon checks back in. Mikhail Elmore will take a seat. And Jones McCrary will take a breather. And Ryan Robinson, the 
Pioneer superfan in the corner, whooping away, trying to cause a missed free throw, as he's done for a decade plus. Harding unfazed, knocks them both down. It's a tie ball game. Ed Wright up top, high post entry for Bosch. Dribble handoff back to Wright, pull up jumper. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Ed Wright operates so well in that mid-range area. Gets the midi to go. Puts the Pioneers back on top. And Wade Williams, three, way too strong. But Savon Smith pokes it towards Corpru. He just about saved another possession. The freshman's done a nice job making some energy plays off the bench for the Mustangs. But timeout on the floor. Pioneers lead at 57-55, 9.57 to go in the ballgame. Ed Wright inbounds it to Anthony Brown. Under 10 minutes to go in the ballgame. Pioneers lead by two. Little token half-court press now shown by CBC. See if they fall back into a zone. It looks like they're going to match up man-to-man. -man. It's a bit of a match-up zone, actually. They get a Bosch in the high post. Backdoor looking for Ed Wright, but guess who? Number three in the blue jersey, Deshaun Corpru, makes another play. This time it's a steal. Can he turn the defense into offense? Flips it back to Williams, now back to Corpru. And there's Wade Williams from the corner. Not a guy you want to leave open. Anthony Brown pulls down the rebound, had it stolen from behind by Harding. Here's Smith, Savon Smith, shot blocked by Anthony Brown. That's a ridiculous block shot. Hanging and getting a piece of it, but it falls right into the lap of the Mustangs for an easy two. Kyle Harding now has 11. Little matchup zone again from Central Baptist. Double team in the short corner on Bosch. Gerard gets it to Ed Wright. Three on the way from the wing. Too strong. All tied at 57, and the matchup zone has forced a couple of stops in a row now. Anthony Brown pokes it free from Harding. He got it back. Now it's Bourbon working on Alexander. Drives into the paint. Jake stays down and forces the miss. Good defense. The 6'5", Jake Alexander, staying in front of a nasty, quick 5'9", point guard. And the length causing some issues for Bourbon that time. Double drag screen, right? The behind the back pass to Gerard Bosch for a would-be layup. It was deflected out of bounds. The idea, Bosch was there on the roll for a moment. Now Jones McCurry will check back in. A little more size on the floor now for Mid-American Nazarene. At right, the only sub 6'5 player on the floor now. Ed all alone in the corner, couldn't quite get it to him. Bourbon snuck over there at the last second. Ed swings to Alexander. Jake, three from the wing and just rattled out. Maybe his first miss tonight. Williams comes up with the rebound in traffic. Here comes Central Baptist. Harding, Euro step, layup. Blocked it, went in anyway. Harding now with 13 points, and Central Baptist has retaken the lead, 59-57. Pioneers take a timeout. Coach Hepker going to talk things over, set something up offensively. 8.06 to go in the ballgame. Mustangs 59, your Pioneers 57.
full court press from Central Baptist out of the timeout. Ed Wright swings it to Bosch. Pioneers could have had a little three on two break there, but instead can try to execute what they had drawn up coming out of the timeout. Central Baptist staying in the matchup zone. Alexander gets it low post to Jones McCurry. He found a diving Ed Wright who was fouled, and that'll send Ed Wright to the free throw line for a one and one. Fouls on Harding, just his second, but it's the eighth team foul on Central Baptist. Ed, front end, just rattles out. He's an excellent free throw shooter and missed the front end of the one and one. Pioneers needed it, trailing by two. Seven and a half to play, the first round game. Pioneers need to take advantage of the time now while Deshaun Corper is on the bench too. As he has been a handful when he's on the floor. Harding probing against Ed Wright. Gets into the paint, drops it off for Foster. He lost it on the way up. Jake Alexander stripped it free. Pioneers are fortunate. Could have had a layup there. Alexander makes a great defensive play. Right with a spinning catch. Now spins into the paint. Kept the pivot foot down. He's fouled, and he's going to go back to the line for two. It's a great catch from Ed Wright. Man, that's a four-point swing potentially as Alexander strips the ball away on what would have been an easy layup. And Ed Wright back the other way, fouled and going to the line. It's a low-scoring game for both of these teams. It looked for a moment there at the start of the second half that this one was going to break open and be an offensive performance from both groups. Instead, it's kind of grinded to a halt. Both teams have shown some, some zone, some press. Been a lot of whistles. Both teams are in the bonus for the rest of the ball game. Ed Wright got the first one to go. He can tie us at 59 now. And he does. Ed Wright with 17 points leads the Pioneers. And we're all knotted at 59. Borbon gets a high ball screen. Pioneers leave two on the ball. With Sivon Smith handles now into the paint, kicks to Foster. Back to Borbon up top. He tries to go by Gerard Bosch. Great defense from Bosch. That should be Pioneer basketball. I can't believe that call. I think the official on the near sideline didn't know. Bosch did not touch it. He did a great job to keep Bourbon in front. That ball just slipped out of his hands out of bounds on the baseline. But Central Baptist is going to keep possession. Carlisle inbounding those four fouls. He got it to Bourbon going back door. Anthony Brown erased it. Just sent it almost to the bench of Central Baptist. But Jonas Carlisle gets the easy layup after the steal in the backcourt. Right place, right time. Carlisle puts the Mustangs back on top by two. It's unfortunate. Inside out, Alexander three from the corner, and he buries it. Jake Alexander hits another one from downtown. He's in double figures. Pioneers retake the lead. Ice the ball screen, but Carlisle gets downhill on the short roll, gets the layup to go. So back-to-back -back buckets from Carlisle. We're trading leads now on every possession. Carlisle, a sophomore from San Antonio, Texas, a transfer from West Texas A&M. Brown left the floater short. There's Corpru for the rebound. Pioneers are matched up man-to-man. -man. Brown and Jones McCurry switch the ball screen on the pick and pop from Carlisle. Ed Wright and Anthony Brown will do the same. Harding got downhill, and there's another steal from Alexander. The low man came over and helped and gets another steal. Jake Alexander making play after play on both ends now. Wright thought about a three, put it on the deck, got in the paint. He's fouled. He's going to go right back to the free throw line. Ed Wright draws the foul on Kyle Harding, his third. Double bonus the rest of the way.
Ed missed the first of two. It's uncharacteristic for Ed Wright to miss more than one free throw in a game, much less in a half. He's missed a couple here down the stretch, but he can tie us at 63 with his second free throw attempt. And he got it to go, so we're tied. Ed Wright leads all scorers with 18 points. Clock ticks down to five minutes to go in the ball game. We'll have our final media timeout on the next Ed ball. Borbon refuses the ball screen, got inside, kicks to a wide open. Jonas Carlisle lined up a three, and it just rattled out. Pioneers are fortunate. Anthony Brown stops, kicks to Alexander, resets, thought about a three. Gerard Bosch comes out to set the little step-up screen. Brown refuses it. Got it to Ed Wright. Puts it on the deck. Goes at Wade Williams. Shoots over the top, and Ed Wright, with 20 points, puts the Pioneers back on top by two. Just stops at his sweet spot, 15 feet, rises up over Wade Williams, knocks it down. Right, Anthony Brown and Corpru, that's the matchup. And Corpru, another assist. Just drops a dime to a backdoor cutter and fosters the easy dunk. Pioneers having to show a lot of help. You've got to give a lot of attention to Corpru, but just too easy on the backdoor out of the corner. Brown into the paint off the screen. Floater got it to go. Anthony Brown now with 18 points. Back and forth we go. 67-65, four minutes to go in the game. It's a high ball screen every possession now for Bourbon. Carlisle rolls into the paint. Jones McCurry cuts him off. Now another one for Foster. Pick and pop this time for Carlisle. Pioneers late switch it. Little veer back switch. Now Corpru has it. Last touched by Gerard Bosch. He deflects it out of bounds. Just five on the shot clock. So we've hit our under five media timeout. It'll be Central Baptist basketball on the sideline with five on the shot clock. 3.39 to go in the ball game when we come back. Pioneers lead by two. You're watching the opening round of the NAI National Tournament. Five seconds on the shot clock. Carlisle the inbound. You got to think it's going to Deshaun Corpru. It is. He catches, spins, puts it on the deck, into the paint, and he's fouled. Going to go to the line for two. Gerard Bosch commits the personal. Foul number Gerard Bosch. It's his third. You got to put ball pressure on because you cannot let him get a shot off at the three point line the way he's shooting the ball tonight. But Corpru will head to the free throw line for two. He's a 75.5% free throw shooter. And he missed the front end. So something about good free throw shooters in tournament games is Ed Wright's missed a couple, and now Corpru misses one. Corpru gets the second, so it's a one-point game with three and a half to play. Full court press now from the Mustangs. Here comes the double team, right? Pick the dribble up and got it to Anthony Brown, excuse me, Jake Alexander. And there's going to be a foul on Kyle Harding, who took a shot to the ribs from Ed Wright. Ed stepped through that double team, and Harding took the brunt of it. But it's a legal play for Ed Wright, creating some space there. Didn't 
extend an arm, just being strong with the basketball. Harding picks up his fourth foul, I believe. But it's going to send Ed to the line for two. And nothing but net on the first. And Ed gets them both. It's a 69-66 lead. Pioneers led in scoring by Wright with 22. Clock ticks under three and a half to go. Harding pick and pop to Corpru. The Texas Tech transfer puts it on the deck. Good defense from Wright. Oh, and he's going to be fouled all the way out top at the three-point line without a live dribble. And that's just not a smart foul. You're going to send Corpru back to the line for two shots. Well, one and one. He had already picked his dribble up, and Wright was draped all over him. Just a little too much body contact. The last thing you want to do is send a great score to the free throw line where he can see a couple go in with nobody guarding him. Then all of a sudden that basket gets real big again. As Corpru's hit four or five just highly contested threes off the bounce. He's got 19 points, a chance to make it 20. And he left it way short. That's shocking. His Corpru's been lights out all night long and air balls the second free throw. So Pioneers lead by two. Cook Center crowd letting them know about it a little bit. I don't know if I'd rile up to Sean Corpru. Full court press still. Quick double comes. Right? Puts it on the deck. Nope. He traveled first. Yeah, that's a turnover. Ed Wright was double teamed as soon as he caught it and he shuffled the feet as he was trying to put the ball down. And Carlisle's got to be careful not to pick up a tech. He was clapping right in the face of Ed Wright after the turnover. CBC's already been whistled for one tech. It was Borbone, who's on the bench now, letting Kyle Harding run the point. Inbound to Corpru. He calls for an isolation. Just clears out that left side. Puts it on the deck. Bosch, contested three-pointer, and he left it short again. Corpru airballs the three. So left the free throw way short and then left the three. Now he's going to the official saying, I was hit on the forearm. I'm partially inclined to believe him because of how well he shot earlier in the game. But no foul was called, and it's Pioneer basketball. The Mustangs can set up that full-court press once again. Jake Alexander will inbound, and he cannot run the baseline. It's not after a made basket, so he's got to stay put. And Bosch comes to the rescue, has to put it on the deck. Here comes the double team. He got rid of it. Alexander picks his dribble up near midcourt. Now Ed Wright gets it up top, and Pioneers just got it across before the 10 seconds in the backcourt. Just 15 on the shot clock now. Jones McCurry. Attacks the rim and has his shot blocked by Devin Foster. Caleb maybe had some contact from behind from Corpru, but a six foot eight Jones McCrary is very athletic. Shot erased at the rim by the 6'3 sophomore Foster. Under 10 on the clock. Great cut. Jake Alexander with the reverse slam. The assist to Anthony Brown and Jake Alexander with the highlight dunk. Pioneers back on top by four with two and a half to play. Since he first checked into the ball game, Jake Alexander has made momentum-changing plays all night for the Pioneers. But after the reverse dunk on one end, Jones McCurry picks up the personal on the other, and it's going to send Savon Smith to the free throw line. Nope, excuse me, it's going to send Jonas Carlisle to the line. Carlisle, a 70% free throw shooter on the season. Knocks down the first to make this a one possession game. Carlisle got them both. 
So 71-69 lead now, full court press back on. Bosch came to the rescue and now it's Ed Wright will bring it up against man-to-man -man pressure from Savant Smith. Central Baptist though has shown a couple of times a man-to-man -man pressure and then out of nowhere brought a double team. Pioneers have to be alert against the press. Zoom action to Ed Wright, dribble handoff. He drops a dime to Jones McCurry, had it stripped away. Kyle Harding with great hands. Here come the Mustangs in transition. Carlisle for three in the lead, and he's going to go to the line for three free throws. Jones McCurry fouled the three-point shooter. Trying to hustle back in transition defense, but Caleb picks up his fourth personal. And Kyle Harding, who's got 13 points in the game, will walk to the line for three. Excuse me. It's going to be Jonas Carlisle walking to the line for three. He's got 11 as of right now and just knocked down a couple of free throws. And he can put the Mustangs back in the lead from the charity strike. He left the first one short, so pending a make and an offensive rebound and a putback. The worst the Pioneers can be is tied with under two minutes to play and the ball. Carlisle does hit the second. And we're going to see Makai Elmore check back in. Makai again has not played in several months. He's been in a walking boot with a broken foot. And they're going to put him back out there for his ball handling against this full court press. And Makai has knocked down his first shot of the game, but has looked a little rusty. It's tough to not play for months and be thrown into a national tournament game. So we'll see if he can alleviate some pressure against this press. Carlisle goes one for three, so Pioneers hang on to a one-point lead. Under two to play. Brown brings it across against the press. Double drag ball screen. Ant uses it, gets right to left, into the paint. Floater rattles out. A battle for the rebound. Eventually won by Foster, and he lost it out of bounds. It's going to be Pioneer basketball with a fresh 30-second shot clock. And that remains to be seen as officials are going to blow this one dead and go to the monitor and take a look at it. I think it was last touched by Foster, and it'll be Pioneer basketball. But the referees are going to take another look at the replay to confirm. And we'll take a break. With 1.37 to go in the ballgame, Pioneers 71, Mustang 70. You're watching the opening round of the NAI National Tournament. So it is Pioneer basketball after the timeout, but they're going to say there was no change of possession, and there's just 11 on the shot clock. Anthony Brown will inbound baseline underneath with just 11 to shoot. Then a bit of an interesting 
group on the floor for Central Baptist, their leading scorer on the season, Sage Bourbon, their point guard, picked up a technical foul early in the second half and really hasn't played much since. They haven't lost much because Kyle Harding's been excellent off the bench, another Division I transfer. But Bourbon, team's leading scorer, held to just two points tonight and has played very sparingly here in the second half. And head coach... Sam Conkey asking for an explanation from the refs about, I don't know if he's arguing whose ball it should be or if he's asking for an explanation about the time on the clock. Okay, so they've reset the shot clock to 16 now. After much deliberation, it's Pioneer ball, 16 on the shot clock with a one-point lead and a minute and a half to go in the ballgame. Alexander cuts to the rim, and there's a dunk for Jake Alexander. Too many Mustang eyes went to Jones McCrary, isolated on the block, and Jake Alexander took advantage. Anthony Brown found him on the pass, but another dunk for Alexander. Pioneers lead it by three. Jake's got 14. Savon Smith up top to Carlisle. They look to go back door to Corpru. Gerard Bosch get a good job not letting him catch. Late shot clock now. Three on the way from Harding. No good, but an offensive rebound from Carlisle. That's a huge O board. Now Harding puts it on the deck, drops it back off to Carlisle, and he kicks to Corpru. A step back three to tie it. He got it. Deshaun Corpru again. That's got to be his fifth step back three of the game, or at least off the dribble three of the game. That one ties us at 73. Corpru has 22. You've got to give credit to the offensive rebound of Carlisle. Savon Smith blows up the dribble handoff exchange. He touched it last, though. It is Pioneer basketball. I thought maybe last touch by Anthony Brown, but Pioneers keep it. 15 on the shot clock in a tie game, and Coach Hefter going to talk things over, draw something up out of the timeout. Should be a two-for-one situation for the Pioneers. Well, we'll see what Coach Hep's got in the bag coming out of a full timeout. We're tied at 73, 40 seconds to go in the ballgame. Anthony Brown will inbound it on the sideline. 40 seconds to go in the game, 15 on the shot clock. It's Caleb Jones McCrary, Gerard Bosch, Ed Wright, and Jake Alexander. The four out there on the floor. We're all tied at 73. Deshaun Corpru and Ed Wright lead all scorers with 22 points apiece. Ball's inbounded to Wright up top. He's one-on-one -on -one with Savon Smith. High post catch for Jones McCrary. Zoom action, Brown off the handoff. Swung back to Ed Wright, three's on the way, too strong. Jake Alexander pulls down the offensive rebound and he's fouled. There's that man again, Jake Alexander, with another hustle play. This time it's an O board and he's gonna go to the line with a chance to put the Pioneers back on top with the shot clock turned off for the rest of regulation. 26.9 on the clock. And Jake Alexander at the line for two. The McPherson maniac living up to his name, a fifth-year senior, make play after play and now has a chance to put the Pioneers on top at the line. Coach Conkey from Central Baptist is going to make him think about it for a minute. Full timeout. 
You are watching the opening round of the NAIA Men's Basketball National Tournament here on the campus of Mid-America Nazarene University. So after five seasons of basketball in a Mid-America Nazarene uniform, Jake Alexander finds himself at the free throw line in the national tournament with 26 seconds to play in a tie game. And first free throw hit the rim about six times and somehow rattled out. And number two also rattled out, but there's Gerard Bosch for the offensive rebound. It's tied up, but possession arrow favors the Pioneers. So it's been hustle plays and offensive rebounds that have given the Pioneers another shot at it. A huge play from the freshman from Barcelona, Spain, Gerard Bosch, got his hands on that ball. And it was tied up, but we're going to keep possession on the baseline. Anthony Brown will inbound it. There's a five second difference between shot and game clock. So Pioneers can take just about the remainder before they get a shot off. And we're gonna talk things over for a 30 second timeout. Pioneers will inbound on the baseline, 25 to play in the game, 20 on the shot clock in a tie ball game in the opening round of the national tournament. Four flat on the baseline as Anthony Brown inbounds it. He goes to the high post to Jones McCurry. Gets it back on a handoff. He's got Corpru switched on him. And we'll see what the Pioneers go to late in the shot clock. It looks like it may be a high ball screen coming from Bosch. Here it comes. He sets it, gets a switch. Anthony Brown downhill, floater from the baseline, no good. Rebound Carlisle. Timeout Mustangs. So Central Baptist comes up with the stop they needed. There's 7.9 to play, and Central Baptist will have to go the length of the floor. In the men's game, you do not advance the ball on a timeout. So CBC will have the length of the floor to go. 30-second timeout, all tied at 73.
Always interested to see how teams defend in this situation. Do you switch everything? Do you leave your best defender on Corpru? He's going to inbound it. He rolls it into Borbon. So clock will not start until he touches it. Here it comes. Seven seconds to play. Borbon pitches it back to Corpru. He gets downhill. Shot fakes. Wild shot attempt. Got his own miss. Put it back up and another stop. Pioneers come up with the stop. Deshaun Corpru got to the block. Got two defenders off their feet, but... Great job by Anthony Brown and Jones McCurry to not commit a foul, and we're going to overtime. Playoff basketball, and we got five more minutes. All tied at 73, overtime forthcoming, mnusports.com. I think everyone in the Cook Center was holding their breath as the Sean Corpru went to the rim to end regulation. But Pioneers get the stop, and we've got overtime. Jones McCrary will jump center against Jonas Carlisle. Five more minutes on the clock. And actually, Carlisle won the tip, but he tipped it into the hands of Anthony Brown. So it's Pioneer basketball to get us started in OT. Isolated in the post is Jones McCurry. Ed Wright puts it on the deck, steps through, and dropped it off for Jones McCurry, but there's another steal from Corpru. This kid has been spectacular tonight. 22 points. Can't tell you how many times he's got his hand on a ball on a pass or a shot. Forces the turnover that time. Now Corpru down the lane, lefty layup up and in. Central Baptist on top by two. Anthony Brown directing traffic up top. It's to Bosch. A high post to Jones McCurry. Fakes the handoff. Now back to Anthony Brown. And just about lost his footing. Got it back. Puts it on the deck. Spins. Dropped it off for Bosch. Bosch fouled, and he's going to go to the line for two. Gerard ended up underneath the backboard. Took some contact, though, and he's going to go to the line for two with a chance to tie this game. Free throw shooting down the stretch has been a bit of an issue for the Pioneers. Bosch has struggled at the line throughout the year. The capable shooter, the lefty. First one on the way. Off the mark. Free throw shooting in close games can be what flips a game. Bosch goes one for two. It's a one-point game, four minutes to play. Five-out lineup from Central Baptist. All five of those guys can put it on the deck and shoot it from three. Awfully tough to guard. It's Corpru working right to left. He stops behind the ball screen, shoots a pull-up three, and he missed it. Thankfully, Anthony Brown there to pull down the defensive rebound. Every time the ball leaves the hands of number three, Hold my breath. Jones McCurry battling for the loose ball on the baseline. He lost his footing, turned it over. Here comes Central Baptist in transition. Williams thought about a three, turned it down. Jones McCurry able to recover transition defense. Borbon puts it on the floor, guarded by the much bigger Bosch, but the quickness advantage for Sage Borbon into the paint. Kicks out to a great shooter. Williams buries the three from the corner. 
78-74 lead now. Wade Williams in double figures with 11. Anthony Brown, one-on-one -on -one with Williams, looking to respond. Crosses over left to right in the paint. Floater is good. AB gets back to that right-handed floater in the paint so well. Shoots it at a high percentage. 78-76 now. Mustang still lead by two. Good defense by Bosch. Cut off Borbon. He was trying to draw the foul. And Bosch is able to stay vertical and stripped it away. Borbon turns it over. Great defense from the freshman. The 6'7 power forward really staying in front of the lightning quick point guard forces the turnover. Spread pick and roll. Brown refuses it. Goes inside. Had it blocked on the way up. A lot of contact. Anthony Brown begging for the foul. Didn't get it. Two on the clock. Carlisle with the ball back to Borbon up top. Well, Harding going to run the offense now. Division one transfer senior. Awfully comfortable with the ball in his hands. Working against Jake Alexander. Euro steps. Jake, good defense. Forces the miss. And Jones McCreary there for the rebound. And that's a jump ball. Nope, it's a foul. That's a huge whistle because if it was a jump ball, Central Baptist would have kept possession. The possession arrow is still in favor of Central Baptist College, but instead, Jonas Carlisle picks up his fifth personal foul, and he's fouled out of this one in overtime. But Carlisle has really had an outstanding game. Will head to the bench with his five, and it's going to send Jake Alexander, excuse me, it's going to send Caleb Jones McCurry to the line for two shots, down by two. So with Carlisle out of the game, Devin Foster checks back in. Central Baptist loses a little bit of size. Foster, 6'3", plays on the perimeter. Carlisle did some work inside as well as Jones McCurry rattles in the first free throw. Chance to tie us at 78. Left it short. And that ball was last touched by the Pioneers. And the call on the floor is that it's Mustang basketball. Coach Hepker asking him to go to the monitor and review it in overtime. And you can do that. So officials will review who touched it last and we'll update you when we come back. A minute 42 to play in overtime. Mustang 78, Pioneers 77. So it is Central Baptist basketball after review. And Bourbon will bring it across and set up the offense with a one-point lead. This will be a Spain pick and roll set. Now they're going to go to Corpru right side. Gets the ball screen and a switch. He's guarded by Ed Wright out top. Significant size advantage for Corpru. Ed sits down in the stance. I feel like that's a good defensive possession by... Ed Wright, <laughs> he's whistled for a personal foul out top, and both teams in the double bonus, of course, so Corpor is going to go to the line for two. 
<laughs> Devin Foster thought Deshaun Corpru was having some extra words with Ed Wright. <laughs> and Ed tried to go stand in the huddle of the Central Baptist College. De facto timeout, official Pat Bay ushered him away. I don't know why. Technically, there's no timeout on the floor, so Ed has just as much right to stand there as any of the Central Baptist College players do. But Pat Bay decided otherwise and ushered him away. <laughs> if it was a timeout, you can't stand there, but it's not. We're in live play. No matter. Corpru does miss the first. So he's been exceptional all night, but has missed a couple of free throws in the second half. Has 24 points in the game. His team leads by one, make it 25 and a two-point lead. Full court press now from CBC. Brown will bring it across, just man-to-man -man pressure. Twist action, Anthony Brown off the handoff, swings to right. Ed puts it on the deck, stops, pull-up jumper, left it short, and that rebound eventually corralled by Corpru. A minute to play. Mustangs with a two-point lead and the ball. Harding out top trying to get it to Corpru on the wing. He went down. I think there was he was tangled up with Ed Wright. I don't think the foul is on Wright. And the refs are going to stop play and go to the monitors and review this. I don't know if they're looking at a potential intentional foul. Ed doesn't seem too concerned that there was anything flagrant. But Corpru is down and appears to be in some pain. So I didn't see what happened on the far side. But Deshaun Corpru getting some attention from the training staff and his coach. So I'm unsure unsure what the injury is. He'll be looked at and we'll give you an update when we can. Official timeout, 48 seconds to play. CBC 79, MNU 77. Okay, so lots to update you on. The common foul was called on Caleb Jones McCrary. That's his fifth personal, so he's fouled out of the game. They were reviewing to see if there was a flagrant. There is none, so it's just a common foul. But Deshaun Corpru was helped off the floor by the athletic training staff, and he was putting absolutely no weight on his right foot which is terrible news for Central Baptist College, not only for the final 48 seconds of tonight, but should they go on to win this game. They play an excellent Bethel Pilots team from Indiana tomorrow. And without Deshaun Corpru, that's an awfully tall task. So hopefully he's okay, but did not look great exiting the building. Savon Smith is at the line shooting two. The freshman, not a great perimeter shooter. He's 0 for 2 at the line today. Make it 0 for 3. So Branton Van Dyke, the sophomore point guard from Herman, Utah, is back in for the Pioneers as Jones McCurry's done for the day. And Sivon Smith, the freshman from Little Rock, at the line for one more. And it spins out. So Pioneers hang on to a two-point deficit. Brown going to bring it across the timeline. Goes to Van Dyke, gets it back on a pistol action, puts it on the deck. Anthony in the paint, turns, floater, missed it strong. Central Baptist comes down with the rebound. There's a five-second difference between shot clock and game clock. And Pioneers foul in the backcourt. It's going to send CBC to the line for two. Ed Wright is whistled for the foul. It's his fourth. Ed 
It's going to send Sage Bourbon to the free throw line. This is the Mustangs' leading scorer on the season, although he's only got two points here tonight. He's a 66% free throw shooter on the season. The lefty point guard from the Bronx, New York, steps to the line, and he missed the front end. It's 77-79 now. Still, I should say, after three consecutive missed free throws from Central Baptist. So, priority number one is box out. Cannot afford to give up an offensive rebound here should Bourbon miss the second. And he did. He left it short. Gerard Bosch comes up with the rebound. Van Dyke handling it at the point. Pioneers go top to Gerard Bosch. Zoom action to Anthony Brown. They're going to twist the ball screen and get him downhill right to left. It's guarded by Wade Williams up top, one-on-one. -on -one. Anthony Brown puts it on the deck. Into the paint, stops, spins, floater, rattles out. How did that not go in? Central Baptist can't track down the rebound. Alexander got it, and he's fouled. Jake Alexander is fouled by Wade Williams with three and a half seconds to play, and he's going to go to the line for two foul shots and another chance to tie this game. The foul's on Devin Foster, excuse me, his first personal, and Foster not arguing, patting his chest saying, I got it. What a play by Alexander just to track down that loose ball over and over again. He's come up with big plays on the offensive glass. Can't have a bigger one than that. Got the possession back, and Jake going to go to the free throw line with a chance to tie it. He was at the free throw line at the end of regulation in a tie game and came up 0 for 2. Now here in overtime, a chance at redemption. He can tie us at 79. 30 second timeout to think about it, three and a half to play. You're watching the first round of the NAI National Tournament. Jake Alexander, the fifth-year senior from McPherson, Kansas. At the free throw line, Pioneers trail by two. Four and a half seconds have been put on the clock now, remaining in overtime. First one too strong off the back rim. And Pioneers... going to call timeout and talk things over. Do you want to make this one foul, play a free throw game? Four and a half seconds, not a ton of time. We'll see if they go with the intentional miss, try to get an offensive rebound. Full timeout, Pioneers, four and a half to play. Alexander at the line for the second attempt, down by two, expecting an intentional miss. Gerard Bosch and Anthony Brown on the lane line is going to be going for the offensive rebound. 
Jake left it short. Bosch there. He tipped it up. It just about rattled in. That's out of bounds off Central Baptist. Pioneers will have another possession. They're going to review it to make sure it's Pioneer basketball. I believe that it is. Bosch just about tipped that ball in. And the Cook Center almost exploded. The call on the floor is Mid-America Nazarene basketball. Officials will head to the monitor to review. Okay, it is Pioneer basketball. Officials have put a half second back on the clock, so two and a half seconds. Jake Alexander will inbound it now from the baseline. Ed Wright curls around a screen on the baseline. Now here comes Anthony Brown. He catches, floater up, it's good. Anthony Brown ties the game at 79.7 to go. A huge basket from the Heart of America Conference Player of the Year, Anthony Brown. He's got 22 points in the ball game, and we're tied at 79. Central Baptist basketball, .7 on the clock with the length of the floor to go. And unless there's a miracle or a foul, we'll have double overtime. Pioneers cannot foul. And if we go to double overtime, Central Baptist is likely going to be without Deshaun Corporate, who has absolutely dominated this basketball game when he's been on the floor. He's out there on the bench with his teammates now, but he's not joining the huddle, and I don't think he's putting a lot of weight on that right foot, which is just awful news. And you, no matter how this game ends, you would hate for that kid's career to end on an injury after playing an outstanding basketball game. But there'll be time to reflect on that later. They put 1.1 seconds back on the game clock. Your three seeded Pioneers, 79. The 14 seed Central Baptist College Mustangs, 79. With 1.1 seconds remaining in overtime. You see the old Scott Drew Valpo play where you throw it the length of the floor and catch it near the top of the key. Doesn't look that way as all five CBC players are in the backcourt or near it. Have time for one dribble if you're Central Baptist. Bosch cannot run over Foster. They tried it. That's a really heady play. Three's not there. That's a really heads up play by Coach, Coach Sam Conkey as Gerard Bosch was on the ball. And they set a ball screen on the inbounder who could run because it's after a made basket. And Gerard did make a little bit of contact with Foster who went down. Officials did not call the, the, the foul on Bosch for running through the screen. I think that's the right call. It was, it was premeditated. He was going to go down with any contact at all. And so it's a smart play to try to draw that foul. And it's good officiating, in my opinion, to have this game decided in double overtime. 79 all first round of the national tournament. We're going to double OT here in the Cook Center on the campus of Mid-America Nazarene University.
So double overtime now. Jonas Carlisle fouled out for CBC. Caleb Jones McCreary has fouled out for Mid American Nazarene. Deshaun Corpru is out with an injury. And it's the freshman Gerard Bosch jumping center, and the freshman Savon Smith won the tip for the Mustangs. Double overtime, five more minutes. Horns. Horns flare action, looking to get Wade Williams a three. Pioneers able to blow it up. Foster, pull up three over Alexander, left it off the mark. Rebound corralled by Branson Van Dyke. Van Dyke scoreless here tonight, has done a tremendous job in the starting point guard role for the last several months. Pioneers go on a tear, win the conference with Van Dyke at the point, and that's a great play. Kyle Harding steals it from behind, away from Gerard Bosch with the easy two. Mustangs take an early lead here in double overtime. Ed Wright spinning into the lane, got it up, missed it. Bosch, the putback, no good. Wright stepped back in bounds. His putback went in, but they're saying he did not establish himself in bounds. So it's going to be Central Baptist basketball. Possession arrow in favor of the Pioneers now, but they're trailing by two. Four minutes to go. Can you ask for a more dramatic first round of the national tournament than this? Double overtime. Starters fouled out on both teams. Injuries, buzzer beaters. Foster, layup, good on the right side. It's a four-point lead for CDC. Brown, probing, gets a switch into the paint, kicks to Van Dyke. He puts it on the deck, cut off by Bourbon. Now he turns the corner. Brandon, shot fakes, pull-up jumper, missed it. Had a clean look from 12 feet, just couldn't get it to go. Pioneers got to get a stop now as... The Mustangs walking it up the floor with a two-possession lead. Bourbon operating in the ball screen. And leading scorer on the season, just two points tonight. Has struggled at the free throw line. Puts it on the deck, goes by Bosch. Gerard whistled for the foul. Bourbon is going to go to the free throw line. I think that exact same play has happened multiple times in the second half with no foul called, where Bourbon drives left and Bosch Shows his hands, gets hit in the stomach, and didn't get whistled for the foul. But this time they're going to send Bourbon to the line for two. And he gets the first one to go. A five-point lead now for the Mustangs. Under three minutes to go. And neither team playing a big right now. Jones McCurry has fouled. Well, Gerard Bosch is in there. A 6-7 forward. Bourbon splits the pair. It's a five-point game. Brown brings it across. CBC just playing a true five-out lineup. Anthony thought about a three, turned it down. Ed Wright puts it on the deck. And he, how did that not go in? I thought for sure that ball went down off the glass. Harding throws it ahead of everybody. Wade Williams all alone gets the layup. Pioneers got to take a timeout. That's a 7-0 run to start the second overtime for Central Baptist College. 86-79, two and a half to play. Timeout, Pioneers.
CBC shows full court press. 2.35 to play in double OT. Seven point lead. Brown takes the inbounds, double team comes. Handles it. Hand off with Ed Wright on the wing. Ant comes off a flex cut. Trying to go inside, he's fouled. So Anthony gonna go to the line for two. It's good execution. Got him on a flex cut where you can post your best player. And at this point in the game, you'll take an opportunity to score two points with the clock stopped. Anthony hits the first. He's got 23 points. He and Ed Wright combining for 45 of the Pioneer 80. And it got them both. So Pioneers can buckle down, get a couple of stops. This game is not over. Don't have to play the foul game yet. You've got plenty of time to get some stops if you can score on the other end. Borbon working on Van Dyke. Double drag ball screen. He refuses it. Got in the paint. All the way to the cup. Layup. That's way too easy from Sage Borbon. Just refused that drag ball screen. Got into the paint. Laid it in. And the officials have stopped play. I'm unsure what we're reviewing. But veteran official Pat Bay has called an official's timeout, brought his counterpart over to the scorer's table, and they're going to take a look at maybe how much time should be on the clock. Pioneers will have to re-inbound it, I believe, on the, base, on the baseline. And that gives Central a chance to set their press again. I don't, I'm not totally sure why we stopped play there. CBC, full court press, Van Dyke to inbound, gets it to Ed Wright, no double comes immediately, and no double comes at all, they fall back, Brown handles, same play, flex cut, Anthony into the post, no double teams come, here it comes from the baseline side, Anthony had it poked away, it's stolen, Wade Williams stole it. Central did not bring a double team on the catch. They waited until Anthony Brown put the basketball on the floor and Wade Williams came from the baseline side and stole it away. And that's not an accident. That's a well-coached defense. You know, Coach Sam Conkey has drilled that scenario with his guys, bringing the double team on the dribble from the baseline side. And Wade Williams executes it, gets the steal, and it's an eight-point game now as Borbon knocks down the free throw. Three possessions either way, make or miss. It's a make, so it's a nine-point game, under two to play. Pioneers got to go quickly on the offensive end and get a couple of stops. Brown gets a screen. And he's fouled up top by Wade Williams. Williams flop tried to draw an offensive foul. That is the fifth personal on Williams, so he's now fouled out with 13 points, a sharpshooter. And we'll see Tomas Makaisa back in for the first time, the 6'8". First time in a long time, I should say. Back, he started the game. Has just three personals. He's been on the bench for quite some time. 6'8", transfer from Barry University, the Division II in Miami. Wonder if he's a guy the Pioneers may look to foul. He's a 69% free throw shooter. Probably not. You're not going to take your chances with those odds. Brown knocks down the free throw. He's got 25 points. but it'll remain a three possession lead. Make or miss, it's a miss. And Harding pulls down the rebound, leads by eight. Cole into the ball game now, Pioneers press. Elmore and Alexander set the trap, and Foster split it. Timeout, Coach Conkey got a timeout off as Foster split that double team. And may have been going to the free throw line 
for a personal foul, unsure, but no matter. Timeout called first. 30-second timeout here in the Cook Center. 1.31 to go, double overtime. Minute 31 on the clock, three possession lead. Pioneers gonna try to force a quick turnover. You'd think they may foul depending on the personnel. Bourbon just knifes his way through about four Pioneer defenders and he's fouled by Van Dyke. Sage Bourbon who had two points late into overtime and is the leading scorer on the season has been all over the final five minutes, handling the ball against pressure, getting to the rim, and he missed some big free throws in overtime number one, has not missed any here in overtime two. Hits another one. The lead is nine. We give a shout out to Pioneer alumni Lucas Weigel tuning in from Singapore. We got fans all over the world checking out the first round of Heart of NAIA national tournament play. And he's seeing a 10 point lead now with a minute and a half to go. Alexander has a three on two break. He attacks the rim. Left handed layup, no good. Bosch battling for the rebound. It's tied up. Jump ball possession arrow in favor of Mid American Nazarene. Looks like Branton Van Dyke will inbound it on the baseline. Goes high post to Bosch. Zoom action for right. Nope, it's a flare. Alexander, three from the wing. He got it. Jake Alexander hits a three. 92-85 your score. Clock is running. Bourbon handles. Gets it to Harding. Harding to Mikaisa. He's Going to drop it off to Foster, and Foster gets the layup to go, and he's fouled. Devin Foster. Devin Foster now with 14 points and a chance to add to it. That's the fifth personal on Bosch. And he's going to foul out of this one. And Brooks Langer will check back in for Mid-American Nazarene. As Bosch will exit. The two starting front court players for the Pioneers now both fouled out. Foster a chance to make this a 10-point lead. Left it short. Brown the rebound. Throws it the length of the floor to Brooks Langer. Brooks is going to go to the free throw line. I thought for a moment that they were going to call Langer for a travel, but he was tripped. That's what caused the travel. And the, the tripping foul, the blocking foul, is on Sage Bourbon, his third. And Brooks Langer will go to the line for two shots. Official, I think, couldn't make up his mind. I don't know. He started the, the travel signal and then caught himself and pointed at zero and said, eh, eh you got him. Brooks Langer, an excellent free throw shooter, but has been sitting for some time. It's tough to come off the bench and shoot right away. Brooks makes it look easy. Gets the first to go down. Right with the four fouls, it's going to be yo-yoed in and out. The Pioneers are going to be fouling down the stretch here. The first time we have seen BJ, EJ Henderson, excuse me, 
all night long. He checks in off the bench. It's got to be for free throw shooting purposes. He's 8 for 8 on the year. Hadn't missed one. Brooks hits them both. So Pioneers set up in the press. 94-87. Foster inbounds to Bourbon. Double comes. He's fouled by Isaiah Cole. Just about no time comes off the clock, but Bourbon will go right back to the free throw line where he's made a string in a row. You've got to be kidding me. A technical foul has been called on head coach Adam Hepker by longtime official Pat Day. That is a ridiculous time to call a tag. As Hepker was saying, the ball handler keeps throwing his head back, and that should be a flop. I mean, there is absolutely no reason to call a technical foul at this juncture of a national tournament game. Granted, this game, it's not out of reach. Lots of things can happen in a minute, but this, the outcome all but decided. But an, an absurd technical foul call. Well, Bourbon going to stay at the free throw line for a couple shots extra. got them both. He'll stay right there for two more. Bourbon has hit three in a row now on this possession at the free throw line. He'll have another. So what was a quiet game from him has turned into just about his average. He gets 14 a game. He's about to have 13 and will likely be back at the free throw line to add to it. Anthony Brown takes the inbounds, trailing by 11 now. Under a minute to play. Gets a step up screen. Stop and pop three ball. Too strong. Elmore taps it out to Cole. Now fighting for the loose ball. Central Baptist comes up with it. Savon Smith has it. He's fouled. And Smith going to go to the line for two. Where he's 0 for 4 tonight, I believe. But at this point in the ball game, the pressure is all off the free throw shooter. Sivon Smith does knock down the first this time. Missed it too strong. Mikhail Elmore grabs the rebound, brings it across. It's a screen from Langer. Stops. Three ball from Elmore, and he knocks it down. Makai Elmore hits the three. Still a three possession game. Bourbon catches it again and is fouled by Anthony Brown. Bourbon throws that head back in exaggeration once more. There's going to be no flops called, but Brown does pick up the foul. Anthony's second personal. Orban hasn't missed a free throw in a long time. Continues his streak. Central Baptist breaks the century mark. It's a 100 to 90 score with 36 and a half seconds to play. 
in double overtime. Finally misses one. Brown the rebound. Gets it to Elmore. He races across. Another pull up three from the wing. Too strong. Alexander battles for the rebound and it's last touched by Central Baptist, I believe. Pioneers are going to inbound it on in the dead corner. Twenty-eight seconds to play. Elmore will inbound it to Anthony Brown. Flare screen for Langer. Brooks has to cast up a contested three. Got a rim. Defensive rebound for Bourbon. He's going to bring it across, and that's going to do it. I think. Pioneers not going to foul. That's your final score. Central Baptist College, the American Midwest champs, come into the Cook Center and win a true road game in the first round of the national tournament. And they'll be back here tomorrow night at 6 p.m. to take on Bethel out of Indiana. 100 to 90, Mustangs win it. And that'll be the end of the season for your Pioneers. An unbelievable year, the Heart of America Conference champs losing round one of the national tournament. Stick around. We'll have an interview with head coach Sam Conkey and player of the game of his choice here in a few minutes and preview tomorrow night. Second round action between Bethel and Central Baptist College.
So, Devin, congrats on a big win in the opening round of the national tournament. Talk a little bit about the fight from your team. You guys play a true road game in the opening round, go into double overtime, deal with some foul trouble, deal with an injury late, and you guys pull away with a double OT win. Um, I think we really just play hard and play together. I mean, Coach always preaches that our offense, like, we're, the best, we're probably one of the best offensive team in the NIA, but our defense can go to a whole other level. And I think throughout the uh, season, we really be building onto that. And I think tonight, we just, our guys on the bench and just that we have guys getting hurt and guys to pop out. I think the guys on the bench really stepped up and took them without, took that role on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys got a quick turnaround. You play a good Bethel team tomorrow at 6. So celebrate this one, but uh, get some sleep, get some rest, get back to it tomorrow. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. you can hand that to Coach for me. Coach, congrats on a big win. Thanks for staying up and giving us a few minutes after the win. Um, talk about the fight from your group. You guys play a true road game in the first round national tournament, go to double overtime, deal with some foul trouble, deal with an injury to a, a great player late, and come away with a big win in double OT. I think that says a lot about your team. Yeah, you know, we've talked about it all year. We put on our shirts, we hang in the locker room, tougher, toughest team wins. And Midnaz is, is a heck of a tough team too. Like I'm not – but, but man, we, we, we fight, we fought, we grinded. Uh, we had, I think, three players foul out who yeah. are all – Three of our, you know, leading minute getters. Mm -hmm. um, but man, it was next man up. Uh, you know, Jonas Carlisle and Devin Foster really locked in on their two studs, uh, number five and number twenty-five. Yep. Um, it just made things difficult, and they're great players. Um, so it just made everything tough, and whatever buckets they had, they had to earn it. So I got to ask, as a basketball junkie and an X's and O's guy, you guys did some things defensively, playing kind of a five-out lineup where. Maybe waiting to bring a double team till they put it on the floor, coming from the baseline side. Do you guys have a bunch of different calls, or is this kind of a let's wait till after the tournament to let let that go? Uh, you know, it's uh, kind of read and react. Uh, you know, nothing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, just great effort by our guys. And let me just say, uh, watching the film of them up this, you are so you got a great basketball mind, man. No, you thank you. Really, and you educate. You know, people, the fans who are watching. So you do a great job, and you know, just happy for my guys' effort. Well, I appreciate it, and. Yeah, it was a great defensive effort, a great great double overtime win. And you guys got a quick turnaround, play a good Bethel team tomorrow at 6. I know it's early. At Deshaun, is he going to be okay? I know he went down with what looked like an ankle injury. Yeah, so Deshaun uh, went down with an ankle injury, and thank goodness, uh, you know, just rolled it, just sprained it. So, you know, he's icing it. We're going to do everything we can, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's out of our control right now, so yep. we're just going to focus on what we can. And, you know, Bethel's really, really good, um, and we got to come ready to play. Well, Coach, appreciate the time. Congrats on the win. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate that.